Hi, Brian here with Embrilliance. Today we're going to use Stitch Artist Level 2 and explore the satin column inputs. Let's begin with an image that I've prepared for today. We'll click on the Stitch Artist button and we will load an image. And this is one that I've drawn for you just so that we can have some things to mess around with while we work on our satin stitches. The first one I want to draw is the scroll work on the left. Let's go center on that. And we like to work at a consistent zoom, so I'm going to push 6 on my keyboard. But before we start, I want to back up and go to 3 so you can see the project that we're doing. This scroll has some leafy shapes to it. And what we'd like to do is put this together so that it all sews in one nice, smooth, flowing satin manner. What we want to do is come in somewhere down in the lower portion of the stem, come up, sew this leaf, come up, sew the next leaf, and then complete the scroll. Now, typically with satins like this where they end in curves, we don't want to have the satin strokes end right there. We want to end somewhere in the middle. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to go back to my level 6 zoom. And for the sake of it, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and pre pretend that we're coming into this stitch from somewhere down here. You can begin wherever you like, but I just want to give you the idea of an entry run and then we'll create the satin object and keep on working. So today, we're going to start with drawing with points, and we're going to click a line up to the start of this leaf, and let's go ahead and make that a run. Now, I'm going to use Stitch Artist Level 2's left-right alternating input. With this, we're actually creating the inclination lines and the satin shape at the same time. And we do this by discovering that the shape will have a left side and a right side, and we're going to alternate left and right. As we enter the left and right columns, we want to try and imagine the angle that the stitching is going to stitch at. We want it to come around this radius and then smoothly taper to the end right there. Now we don't want our stitching to end there. We want it to end somewhere back where it started. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see the shape. Now yes, we can fine tune the shape. And that shouldn't affect us too badly for our inclinations. You'll see the inclination lines as these lines connected with yellow handles. And if you don't like the angle that you've drawn something at, or you want to just reshape a little bit, you can edit the nodes anytime you like. So now what we've done is we've created an entry run up. You don't have to worry if the points aren't perfectly matched. The software will take care of the transition for you. And the run up goes into our satin column and continues. Let's go back to our working zoom. I'm using 6 to 1. And let's create another run up to the next leaf. And now we'll do the next leaf using the same tool. Now one question might be, does it matter if I start on the left or the right? And the answer is no, not really. It's just alternating sides. A satin stitch has basically two points. It goes from side A to side B. And so what we want to do is make our lines come around these sides at good inclination angles. And if we want more definition in the curve at the end, we can do that. Now, why do we work at continuous or consistent zoom angles or zoom levels? The zoom level is so that you don't wind up putting too much detail. As you can see here at 6 to 1, we have a subgrid in Stitch Artist. Those are 1 millimeter segments. That 1 millimeter is just a little bit thicker than your embroidery needle. So that's actually quite a bit of detail. 
you don't need to zoom radically in and do a lot of fine-tune editing if these points are less than a needle width apart, right? We have to have some consistency to the zoom so that we can understand how much detail and how much resolution we're working with. Okay, so I've moved my stop point back. And if I open my object tree, I'll see that I have my objects. Whoops, that one I made a line. I forgot to make it a run. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll take care of any jumps. And now what we want to do is sew the main stem. So I'm going to zoom down. I'm going to just make sure that I'm at 6 to 1. And I'm going to use the column tool again. And if you know that your object or your background image is narrow, you can make it a little bit wider as you're making these satin stitches. Because we really don't want to create a satin column that's much less than a, about a millimeter and a half or so. And even that's pretty thin. In some fine lettering with a, a thin enough thread needle, you can go down to about a millimeter. But generally, we don't recommend it. You can also wind up with registration problems when you're working with really thin satin columns. Now here as I'm coming around the turn, I want to have my inclination lines basically straight across. I hope I'm doing this slow enough so that you can follow and where you could decide where you would put the inclination points. Here we're turning a tight turn, so we're going to add some a little bit closer together to turn. Now here we have to decide how we want this angle to continue. I'm going to start turning it pretty tightly here. And that's OK. The software will insert what's called short stitches for you when you turn tightly. And that will allow the density in tight areas to sew just fine. So we're going to right click. And we'll just go to S for selected. Let's move our exit point somewhere else because we don't want to end at the tip. And we'll click off. That's our design. Let's run it in the sewing simulator. I'm going to speed this up per normal and click play. And there we have our first left-right alternating input lesson. Now we're going to move on to a different kind of input. We'll go back to Stitch Artist and I'm going to zoom out and I want to work with this shape here. Now this is an interesting problem. It kind of looks like a castle keep, doesn't it? This crenellation. These would give us a problem using the left-right input. Let me show you why. If we start to click alternating points here, what happens now? If I click this on top of itself, it can be kind of strange. We don't want to do that. Now, there are ways to do it, and you can see that we do, in fact, generate. But I want to show you a better way. So I'm going to hit Delete on my keyboard and delete that object. And now we're going to use Draw a Column by Making Two Sides. This is a two-sided satin input. And this one, we select, and we're going to use Point Mode on this. Now, something I didn't do that I, when I was just showing you the alternating on this was to use the Control key. But in this case, I'm going to use the control key so that I'm making hard line points. And with this input, I make one side by clicking along. And then I right click, and I can enter the other side. It doesn't matter if I go left to right or right to left. The software will figure it out for us. So now we're going to right click. And now it's created a shape for us. It's also put on our inclination line. In this case, I only need one inclination. But if it was a turning shape, I could add more inclinations as I chose. 
I'm going to right click and there we have a design. So that's the two-sided input. Now if we come to something like this one, you have your choice. You can use the left and right or you can use the two-sided input. On this one, I think what we're going to do is use the two-sided input. So let's click off our object and we're going to start by giving it an entry run. So let's make one of those. Somewhere over here will do. And let's make it a run. And now we'll use the two-sided input. And this is all curves. So, whoops, I have to select point mode. And here I've got a cusp. So I'm actually going to hit a shift click. Now we're going to right click. And now we can enter the other side. And because this base, I probably want this to be fairly straight across, I'm also going to hold a shift key here. And let's do a shift click down at the end and right click. And now we can enter our inclination lines. When you get to the end, try and make the last one parallel to the ending stroke. This will keep the stitches going at the angle of the end rather than trying to dive into a corner. Let's right click and we have an object. Let's move the exit location of this and now let's run up to the next one. Somewhere there ought to do it. Make that a run and let's enter again. Shift, right click, now it's all set, it's good to go. Let's do a shift and a shift click, right click, and now we'll put in some inclination lines. Right click, move the exit location. Yes, we can use our automatic entries and exits. For the purpose of this lesson, I want you to get used to thinking about your entries and exits. Let's do another traveling run. Run. Let's enter another column. Oops, have to select points. Sometimes when you record a video, it's hard to slow yourself down. That's the first side. Now let's do the second side. Shift key for a cusp there. Shift key for a cusp. Now we're ready for inclinations. Move the exit. And now we can do the main piece. So let's do the same thing, and I'm going to start at one end, select points. I'm going to start with a shift here. Use our auto pan. Let's do a shift here, right click, and now we'll start again with a shift click. And we'll shift click there. Right click, enter some inclination angles.
scroll over a little bit. And right click. Now, let's see what we've made. There's our design. Now I'd like to take a look at a common leaf shape. This shape would be very simple if it sat in straight across. We don't really want to do that. This we want to have more of a normal leaf shape where it looked like there was a vein running down the middle. In order to do that, I'm going to do it with two shapes. And I'm going to just draw the shapes in. Control click, control click, make some points along the outline. Control right click to end. That gives us the first shape. Now I'm going to make the second shape. Control click, control click, and some points around the outside. Control right click to end. Now that I have this shape drawn, I want to turn the image off so that you can see what I've done here. What you can see is I've overlapped these two shapes a little bit. That's going to help with registration issues when these two satin stitches sew out together. Now the next thing we want to do is tell these that they are satin stitches. So we're going to put a satin column on, and we'll select the other one. We can put a satin column on, and we're also going to add inclination. And I want the inclination lines to be a little bit more steep than what the computer gave us by itself. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Add inclinations. And now you can see something that more closely re resembles a leaf. We can also adjust some properties and do some fun things along the edges. Let's go and feather this column a little bit. And we should be able to take the, uh, the side of it and give that a little bit of feathering. And we'll do the same thing on this one. And now we have something that more closely resembles a leaf. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We'll see you again real soon.